6 p.m. on a Friday here in Korea. Welcome to our newscast. I'm Daniel Che. Let's begin with the headlines. The South Korean government announces measures to swiftly and sufficiently minimize tremendous losses businesses are set to experience by the sudden closure of the Kaesong Joint Complex. With the likelihood of more provocative acts from the North, Seoul is set to discuss where and when that can be deployed with the U.S. with priority on national security. Korea's Kostek index fell over 8 percent, causing a sidecar. A similar mechanism to China's circuit breaker kicks in as the slowdown in China and other emerging markets combined with plunging oil prices stokes fears of a repeat of the 2008 global financial crisis. Seoul has laid out measures designed to minimize the substantial losses that companies are expected to face after pulling out of the Kaesong joint complex. Our Connie Kim has our top story. South Korea was quick in laying out support measures for its companies that operated at the inter-Korean Kaesong industrial complex in the north and who were expelled from it on Thursday. The measures, which are the result of discussions from eight ministries, the Financial Services Commission and the Small and Medium Business Administration, will be provided immediately. The measures the government is announcing are aimed at providing swift and sufficient support for companies that have operated inside the complex to minimize their losses. To provide emergency liquidity to firms, Seoul will extend the majority of loans companies received from the Fund for the Cooperation between South and North Korea. Insurance benefits will be given immediately to companies who had signed up for inter-Korean economic cooperation insurance. National and local taxes will be deferred and utility bills, including electricity fees, will be supported. Also, a one-on-one -on -one hotline will be established for the companies to provide needed support as soon as possible. Some 920 million U.S. dollars were reported as losses by the South Korean companies during the five-month shutdown back in 2013. This time around, however, losses are estimated to be double the amount of the total investments South Korea funneled in since the industrial park was established. But Seoul says the shutdown was an inevitable measure. We knew there were going to be difficulties we would have to bear from the shutdown, but we had to make the decision for the country's and the people's safety. And with the electricity and water at the park now cut off, this has been the strongest measure Seoul has put on the last vestige of South North economic cooperation. With the Kaesong complex shut down, their concerns ties between the two Koreas have regressed to the same state they were 44 years ago when the inter-Korean hotline was first established. Connie Kim, Arirang News. An emergency meeting was held at the Corporate Association of the Kaesong Industrial Complex. They demand the South Korean government provide compensation for the damages caused by the sudden suspension. Kim Minji tells us more. Representatives of South Korean firms operating at the Kaesong Industrial Complex urge the government to take responsibility for the damages the companies are likely to suffer following the suspension. The association demanded the government to provide compensation for the losses the companies will face and swiftly restore operations at the industrial park, saying it's a symbol of peaceful coexistence and inter-Korean cooperation. In regards to the government support measures, the association said they are no different from three years ago after operations were suspended for some 160 days. The government must keep its promise to facilitate normal operation regardless of the situation on the peninsula, as agreed upon in August 2013, when restoring operations at the industrial park. For many business owners, their livelihoods are on the line, as some are based solely in Kaesong, meaning their businesses have vanished overnight. Back in 2013, when the complex was shut down, South Korean firms reported a combined loss of over 1 trillion won, which is over 830 million U.S. dollars. I don't know how I'm going to make a living from now on. I might have to look for a job after February. I wasn't even able to collect any personal belongings. Some expect the consequences to be even greater than during the previous shutdown as companies had to leave the complex empty-handed after North Korea froze all assets. 
Because the announcement was so abrupt, we couldn't prepare in advance. Three years ago, we had some time, so we were able to bring out up to 80 to 90 percent of our materials. This time, we have nothing, so the economic damages will be unimaginable. The association says it plans to put together a special team to assess the losses the companies are likely to suffer, as well as make compensation demands to the government. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. South Korean lawmakers met with the businessmen who returned from Kaesong. Shin Se-min fills us in on the potential support system for the firms discussed by rival party lawmakers. Businessmen representing firms based in Kaesong Complex made their way to the parliament to meet with lawmakers as they seek ways to deal with the fallout from an abrupt halt of the jointly run factory site. The rival political parties agreed on the need for additional measures to compensate firms for the damages. The ruling Senduri party even went as far as announcing it may introduce a special law to minimize the losses. The government set up an emergency planning committee and announced support measures, but our party believes additional measures are needed. Should existing law and system prove insufficient, we're more than willing to legislate a special law in this case. However, the main opposition, the Minju Party of Korea, questioned the fundamental need to halt operations at the complex, adding the shutdown of the site will cause a greater economic losses to South Korea. We need to review whether the complete halt of the complex was the right call, as there is no certainty that it will directly curve development of any nuclear weapons program or rocket launch. Meeting face to face, the six businessmen representatives appealed to lawmakers that the damage will be much greater than previously estimated as the North froze all assets in the jointly run factory park. The association demanded Parliament launch an investigative committee to gauge the damages incurred by the firms, as well as determine whether a complete halt was a necessary move. Aside from coming up with measures to compensate the firms, the two main rival parties maintained its differing position on the complete shutdown of the Kaesong Industrial Complex, as the opposition party accused the government of taking advantage of an anti-North Korean sentiment ahead of the April's general election. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Well, South Korea is on full alert for any additional provocations from the North. Efforts to establish dialogue with Pyongyang are also ongoing, as unification has been President Park Geun-hye's goal since taking office. Inter-Korean relations under the Park administration. Song ji sun takes a closer look. Unification has been President Park's vision since our inauguration, but on the condition of a nuclear-free Korean peninsula. 하나된 한반도를 만들기 위한 이런 노력이 하루빨리 이루어질 수 있도록 북한은 비핵화로 나아가야 합니다. 북한이 핵 문제 해결에 대한 진정성 있는 자세로 육자 회담에 복귀하고 핵을 포기하여 진정 북한 주민들의 삶을 돌보기 바랍니다. But even after three years, Pyongyang has refused to take part in talks on denuclearization while furthering its nuclear development, carrying out its fourth test in January this year. And a month after that, Pyongyang launched a rocket placing its satellite into orbit, but through an apparent use of technologies developed for firing a long-range missile. 이번 북한의 행위는 탄도 미사일 발사를 금지한 UN 안보리 결의를 정면으로 위반한 것으로. 북한의 핵 미사일 위협이 국제 사회에 대한 실질적 위협이자 세계 평화의 전면적인 대항이라는 인식 하에 안보리에서 하루속히 강력한 제재 조치를 만들어 내야 할 것입니다. But responded with what could be seen as the strongest action from the south, halting operations at the Kaesong Industrial Complex. She also stressed that separate bilateral and multilateral sanctions in addition to UN resolutions are needed to curb Pyongyang's nuclear ambitions. The Park administration has tried to establish stable exchanges and dialogue over the past three years, but the North has only advanced its nuclear capabilities. Seoul has acknowledged that inter-Korean relations are meaningless as long as Pyongyang continues to possess nuclear weapons. This is a preemptive measure ahead of other international sanctions to come. 
With all channels of exchanges between the two Koreas now shut down by the North after it expelled all South Koreans from the Kaesong Industrial Complex, the priority for the Park administration now is national security, as some experts say the inter-Korean dialogue may not resume during the remainder of our term. Song ji Sun, Arirang News. Despite China and Russia expressing concern and opposition to that deployment in Korea, Seoul is focused on expediting discussions with the U.S. regarding the system as Pyongyang continues to up its hostility. Kwon jang explains further. The South Korean military said they will formally sit down with their U.S. counterparts next week to discuss deployment of the THAAD missile defense system. A key topic of discussion will be the location of deployment. The system is expected to be placed at one of the U.S. military bases in South Korea, but there have been concerns from China and Russia that if the system is deployed too far north, it will infringe on their national security. However, South Korean military officials told reporters on Friday that they will not take their concerns into consideration as the safety of the people in Korea was the main priority. China's foreign minister Wang Yi reiterated his nation's concerns over the missile system while meeting with his Korean counterpart in Germany on Friday. He added that it is not conducive to maintaining peace and stability in the region. But Korea's military said they will take into consideration any disruption or danger to local residents. There are concerns that electromagnetic waves from the system's radar can affect people's health and the local environment. The radar also needs about five and a half kilometers of clear airspace as it can cause electromagnetic interference to airplanes and explosive equipment. Meanwhile, the military officials also gave an update of the situation on the inter-Korean border. They said no troop activity has been spotted north of the border, but that South Korean forces are staying vigilant. After the shutdown of the Kaesong Industrial Complex, we're looking out for any North Korean troop movement and remain on full alert for any further provocations. Earlier, officials also warned that North Korea could turn the Kaesong Industrial Complex into a military base, like it was before becoming a joint venture between the two Koreas in 2004. Military officials have said they do not know whether the North Korean regime will redeploy troops to the industrial complex, but remain ready for any possibilities. Kwon jang Arirang News. South Korea's foreign minister was at the annual Munich Security Conference. Kwon Sowa keeps us up to date on Yoon byung says continued diplomatic efforts to garner greater support in dealing with North Korea's latest threats. South Korea's foreign minister Yoon byung se has called for the cooperation of European countries and NATO members for joint measures in responding to North Korea's recent nuclear and missile threats. Speaking at the Munich Security Conference on Thursday, Yoon said it was time for the international community to show zero tolerance to North Korea's unbridled provocations and that it's time to inflict severe pain on the regime so it'll make the right strategic choice, just as Iran did. Yoon also called for individual countries, as well as international organizations, to play an important role in addition to the UN Security Council's measures. Those measures, meanwhile, have been mulled over for the past month and a week, ever since North Korea's fourth nuclear test. An official at Seoul's foreign ministry said Friday that there has been significant progress on drafting the new resolution over the past week, but that currently more focus is on how strong the resolution will be, rather than on how fast it will be adopted. That's why there are concerns that the process may drag on for months, as was the case in Iran's nuclear deal, especially with no clear word on whether China, North Korea's closest ally, is on board yet for the strongest sanctions to date. And to urge Beijing to step up its role as a permanent member of the UN Security Council, Minister Yoon met with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in Munich Thursday. While the two agreed on the need for a closer bilateral cooperation, Wang stressed a prudent response considering the interests and concerns of neighboring countries, meaning there is more work to be done to narrow the gap on differences. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. The benchmark Cosby dropped nearly 1.5% and the secondary bores took a beating, activating a mechanism similar to the Chinese market circuit breakers. Huang Jie has this report. 
Korea's tech-heavy Kazakh saw shares nosedive just before lunch, shedding as much as 8 percent at one point on Friday. This triggered a sidecar, which is a circuit breaker that suspends share transactions for one minute. The bourse closed down 6 percent. Korea's benchmark Kospi also ended 1.4 percent lower, continuing its downward streak after one of the country's biggest national holidays, Lunar New Year. Over in Japan, the Nikkei closed down over 5 percent, dropping below the psychologically important 15,000 mark. All this comes after the S&P 500 overnight fell 1.2 percent to its lowest close in almost two years and down over 10 percent for the year. The global equity route has been prompted by the slowdown in China as well as measly demand and wobbly performance in other emerging markets on the back of faltering crude oil prices. Sentiment this week was further subdued after U.S. Fed Chair Janet Yellen expressed concerns about the U.S. economy. Worries also linger over how monetary easing policies of central banks will impact markets down the line. The Bank of Japan, in addition to the European Central Bank, has introduced negative interest rates and investors are concerned that policymakers will have less wiggle room in a protracted downturn and the bottom line of banks will be challenged. Financial shares actually led the recent losses in world markets. With that, some are worried about the possibility of a major financial crisis like the one back in 2008, but not everyone expects those conditions to resurface. Financial institutions are in better shape in terms of financial health compared to the past, and that means it can handle more losses. Still, experts in general do agree that policymakers should keep a close eye on the situation as nothing is really foreseeable in times like now. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Turning our focus outside of Korea, world powers have agreed to push for a cessation of hostilities in Syria within one week and expand humanitarian aid beginning immediately. Han Daun brings us the latest. Top diplomats from the world's leading powers, including the U.S., Germany and Russia, reached a deal Friday morning that may signal the beginning of the end to the bloody conflict in Syria. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that as a result, today in Munich, we believe we have made progress on both the humanitarian front and the cessation of hostilities front. Kerry's comments came after 17 member nations of the International Syria Support Group held talks in Munich. The foreign ministers of Germany and Russia echoed Kerry's comments, agreeing they will make efforts to significantly reduce violence within a week. Kerry, however, added that the agreement would not apply to the fight against extreme jihadist groups, namely Islamic State and Al-Qaeda Syria branch Al-Nusra Front. He also said a U.N. task force will be set up to ensure the immediate expansion of humanitarian aid. The Syrian opposition is pleased with the deal. We welcome the effort that our friends are making to relieve the Syrian people and must be for all Syrians. The world powers also agreed the suspended peace talks involving both the Syrian government and the rebels should resume as soon as possible. Han Daun, Arirang News. And those are the updates we have for you at this hour. As always, thank you for watching.